Hello, this is Jenny Clark with Solvability, and today's What's Up with Mitch episode is all about why is this audit taking so long? They always take longer than you want them to. They're always asking you for more than you think you should have to provide. They're always um, giving you a list, and then when they get there, they do, they add other things. It's kind of like when we used to close on a house. There'd always be some emergency document that they knew all along but didn't ask us, and so we have to scramble for it. So Mitch is a small business in federal contracting, and um, he is just bottom line driven. He just always says to me, Jenny, I just want it all to work. So here are the questions that he's been asking me about this audit. And it could be their CPA firm audit. It could be an audit by DCAA, DCMA. But the main thing you want to do is get through that audit as quickly as you can because it takes up a lot of resources. It's very distracting. You just want to get it done. Okay, so here's what Mitch talked to me about. So why don't we have a checklist we can go by to get ready for the audit? Well, I would recommend that as you're doing this, you create a, a checklist, just like you do with a lot of other procedures, and figure out what they're going to want and what they're going to need so that you could gather it ahead of time, put it in a folder specifically with them, and then figure out how you're going to deliver those documents. The checklist would usually be your balance sheet from the prior year, your income statement from the prior year, and um, accounts receivable aging and accounts payable aging. And then whatever it is for the current year through the last close month is typically what they would expect. Frequently, they'll ask for things like an org chart, a list of all your employees and their pay rates. Um, they might ask for um, information about the contracts you've got, maybe a list of all the contracts that start and end date. And you should be keeping something like that anyway. I call it the active contract listing. Some people call it the backlog report. Um, depends on what you put on it. But every single job that you've got that's active, I would want to know the name, the customer, the contract value, the period of performance, who the program manager is, how much you're billing for by month, how much of it is, how much is the contract value ceiling, how much is it, of it is funded, and um, I always like to know the difference between funded minus what you've invoiced, and that's called the funded backlog. How long will they be out here? Well, that depends. Um, if you are providing them information so they can get their job done quickly, they'll be out there less time. But you also have to be asking them, what else do you need? When can I get it to you? Do you need that in electric, electronic format? Or would you prefer a hard copy or do you need it in PDF? Find out what it is so you can make it so they can expedite their information. Also check on them if they're in your, in their, in your office for a day or two and uh, you want to make sure that they are, are making progress. Um, go by and talk to them a little bit about it. Find out what they're doing, what they need. Is there anything you could do to provide it faster? Because that's going to speed things up. Third quest thing is, why do they keep asking the same questions? Have you ever gone to a new doctor and they, you find out they're asking you the same question like four different ways to see if it's consistent? It's really the same thing. Sometimes they didn't write down your answer and they're just asking it again because they weren't paying attention. Other times they're trying to ask it different ways to see if you answer the question consistently. And what they're doing when they do that frequently is they're trying to make sure that you understand what they're asking for. There's so much terminology that's used in accounting that you might not be as familiar with. And it's almost like they'll start rattling it off and you're like, I, don't, I have no idea what they're talking about. So um, anyway, just know what those questions might be. And I would also say that as you're going through that audit the first time, write down those questions and make it part of your checklist that you do to get ready for the audit so that you're going to speed things up a little bit. Why well, keep looking for the same stuff you could find it and have it prepared? What do they mean that we have to do accrual basis and not cash basis? Cash basis accounting means that you really only treat what you receive payments for as, as revenue and that you only treat expenses as what you've paid out, that you've written a check for um, that's coming out of your bank account. That's really not a very accurate picture of the company. That's how you report taxes for the most part. But um, by the time I've written a check, I spent that money um, 
60 or 90 days ago. It's kind of like where I used to go shopping at the mall and I come back and I put all the stuff that I bought on my new outfits in the trunk and leave it there until it was a convenient time to bring it into the house because I didn't want to admit how much I just spent shopping and I could put it off until I wrote the check for it because I put it on a credit card, timed it perfectly, so I had 60 days worth of float. That's a game. Don't play that game. You really need to be on an accrual basis, which means revenue should be recognized in the accounting periods earned. So the hours that your team works in uh, the month of November should be November's revenue. And by the same token, their expenses, their payroll expenses during that were related to that revenue should be also November cost. And so it's called the matching principle. If you're not following it, what's going to happen is one month you're profitable, the next month you're not. One month you're profitable, the next month you're not. And what that really means is you've got some timing differences, that you've got expenses that should have been in the, in the profitable month weren't recorded, and so it makes it look like you made a lot of money in the first month, and the next month it catches up with you. So uh, accrual basis also means that you're taking a look at some things that you might not be identifying, you might not know on a monthly basis, but you need to estimate for it. A perfect example of this is depreciation. I've had companies that, you know, that looks like they're profitable all year, and then they get their depreciation entry from the um, CPA firm, and all of their profit goes away. Now, people say depreciation is not that important because it's not cash, but at the same time, everything you're doing in federal contracting is based not on cash basis, but accrual basis. And so if you're calculating your rates and your rates don't include an estimate for depreciation, you are not stating your rates correctly. You're going to be underbidding. You're not going to be profitable. What is it going to take to get the audit completed? I think the main thing is it's going to take you following up with the auditors, asking them what they need, letting them know that you're watching, that they're there, and that you're ready for them to finish up. So Mitch is just all about, I just want it all to work. Mitch is unstoppable. Are you unstoppable? You know where you want to go. Solvability can help you get there with the cost and pricing intelligence you need to accelerate and scale your business. Most of our clients get started with our free wrap rate calculator, simple spreadsheet. It comes with instructions that explains to you how to make sure that you're making money on every job you're bidding. There's several ways to calculate wrap rates. It could also be called a multiplier. What you're trying to do is go from a person's pay or salary rate to their fully burdened labor rate or their billing rate and make sure you're billing out enough to cover all the costs that you're incurring. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to pay yourself what you want. So you can go to our website at solvability.com to download that wrap rate calculator. Our website is S as in Sam, O-L-V as in Victor, and the word ability.com. If you've got something more urgent, something you might need more advanced services from, I'd love to talk to you. My best way to reach me is to text me at area code 256-882-6276, and let's set up a call, see what you need.